At the moment, AI is the current big thing and it's talked about a lot on the internet. AI is supposed to change the world as we know it, it's something that will revolutionize the way we work and live our lives, you've heard about all this stuff. But where are the limits? There has to be a line in the sand on the abilities of this new intelligence, right? Don't get me wrong, AI is really powerful. The ability for it to create a hamburger in the shape of a Rubik's Cube on a command from my text description is really mind-blowing. But as you may know, AI relies on its available data. The available data is always from the past. In our case, it knows very well what a Rubik's Cube looks like, it also knows the shape and colors of a hamburger, so it can easily combine it together and present us this masterpiece. But when you ask it to create a picture of a car of a certain brand, for example the BMW F30, things don't look as good, the logo isn't as clear and it cannot recreate it perfectly. The reason for it is because it has less data regarding this exact car brand and model from this specific year than data regarding something like a hamburger. So the point is that AI is only as good as the data it's trained on. So when the car company comes out with a new car model, AI of course has no idea about it. It can't just conjure up a brand new car model out of thin air, because it needs data from the past. With more data, it gets better. As more and more photos and renders of our new car appear on the internet, the AI can finally grasp the new model. Some people believe that just because it's called intelligence, it can think on its own. Well, it's still a computer system that analyzes data, and it's not human, obviously. This gets us to the ELISA effect. When you fire up chat GPT and you feel like you're talking to a real person, well, that's the ELISA effect. Named after the chatbot ELISA from 1960s, which was basically the grandpa of chat GPT and it describes the situation when people treat technology as human and believe in its capabilities to such extents. People would spill their darkest secrets to it, thinking the machine actually cared about them. It's also happening today with customer service bots and even these type of AI chatbots. Well, the point I'm trying to make is that some people think that the AI has no limitations and that it's gonna possess human-like intelligence. Another part of the equation that we don't really have solved right now is the responsibility. Well, AI is planned on being implemented into some serious fields like law, medicine, and some other where the stakes are really high. Now, imagine using AI in court to solve cases. Who is going to be held accountable for the result the AI provides? Is it going to be the user, or are we going to blame the developers who created the AI in case something goes wrong? And as we talked about the fact that AI is trained on past data and can be biased towards one side, how do we know that the AI is fair? Some people literally posted screenshots of their communication with the Microsoft AI where they convinced the system that 2 plus 2 equals 5. Or there were other occasions where the AI literally provided answers that were straight up incorrect. Ali Abdel, the productivity YouTuber that we all know and love, wanted to showcase the functionality of AI in one of his recent videos and he asked it to come up with some studies about some specific subject. And the AI spitted out some studies alongside the numbers which pertain to individual studies and these literally did not even exist. It had the data from somewhere, so it could say what was like part of the study, but it had no idea about the numbers and it was just straight up wrong. So what I'm trying to say is that there always has to be some level of supervision and oversight above all these systems. Yes, it can help doctors and writers and many other people, but you can't just rely on it 100%. Others claim that AI can be creative, but I have to disagree. You can ask it to write a script for YouTube videos and stuff, but just take a look at the example above. I've just mentioned Ali Abdel's video about AI and where he noticed some flaws. AI would never write me a YouTube script containing this example. 
Chat GPT or other AI systems don't know the script should mention him. This video is not about Ali, so why would it mention his name? It makes no sense to the algorithm. So, once a person with creativity, intuition, and the understanding of context asks the AI to come up with example from Ali Abdel, the AI will do it, but on its own, it doesn't come up with it. Or another example, on a TikTok, there was a creator who came up with an inside joke. Basically, he replaced the laughing emoji with a chair emoji and convinced everyone to use it, leaving the rest of the people confused. The whole thing got really big and there were even articles talking about it, but my point is, how would AI come up with this stuff? It knows what chairs are used for and it knows what the laughing emoji means because it relies on past data, but it would never come up with this joke. I can ask ChatGPT to give me advice on how to make this video a bit funnier, but it would never tell me to show a chair emoji after I crack a joke. Even in knowing the context of this video, it's a new thing for the algorithm. Yes, creativity is basically combining things that were not combined before or in a different context. Creating something new, but ultimately, real humans give it meaning, so it only shows that AI is an amazing tool. Now the replacement for human creativity. During a gold rush, AI would tell you where to find gold and how to get it, but a creative person would start selling shovels. And the last thing I want to touch on is the society factor. The main limitation of AI is the one we as a society give it. If people don't want to use it, they won't. There are already so many customer chatbots and virtual assistants, but we still want to talk to real people. We still want to go to a bank and have a person available for us. AI art is real and it's here, and anything can be created in the matter of seconds, but we don't want to admire it. We want to see stories, real drawings from real people, drawings that symbolize different things of different people. So even though AI can easily create an oil painting of a village, we'd much rather admire a real oil painting of a real village that has some meaning. Also, there have been chess bots available for quite some time that are better at chess than every single person on the earth. Is it the end of chess? No, it's a tool that helps you learn it. So, of course, there are other things we should take into account, like the computing power needed to use AI, which sometimes results in a slow responses, or we can speculate about the whole concept of AI and how we are trying to mechanize our brain and thoughts, how logical and rational thinking is supposed to be reproduced artificially, the emotional intelligence that's of course not present with AI, but I want to conclude this video saying that these tools are awesome, but they're just that tools. So thanks a lot for watching till the end. This is Foxtech TV, and we can see each other later.